Hello and welcome to my uh, jungle garden journey. I'm Steve, I hope you're all good. I'm um, just doing a quick update. It's a lovely Saturday afternoon in the middle of September. It's about 21 degrees. Sun's out, so can't complain really. Uh, mostly been doing a few sort of more landscaping bits, but I did buy some new plants and the giant honeysuckle has arrived, but we'll get there in a minute. So this may end up being a sort of two-parter because I'm halfway through some bits. Um, so anything I don't update on this run I'll do on the next one but I don't know whether I'll get it done tomorrow or not so <clears throat> anyway let's crack on so first thing of note that I've done is I've put my trellis stroke windbreak in here this is because the wind seems to be coming off the top of the garage there and sort of blowing along the fence and against this lot sort of that way so I wanted to put something in to break up the wind a little bit um, from what I can tell it's not actually it's not actually made a difference but you know once it's got something growing on it it should do um, so and underneath it I said I was going to use these old curb stones that I just acquired uh, when I say acquired I don't mean acquired acquired I mean a friend of a friend extended a drive in a house he was renting because it was an old small thin one um, and when he moved out the guy said either rebuild it or get rid of the stones so he got rid of the stones to me so I've just um, laid a couple of them along there as a bit of support and then just put these on top and the reason I did that was to make this so it sticks out the top a bit because all I was thinking is is that if I get a trellis on top of this fence you know 20 30 centimeters then this is going to marry up with it so I wind it up high and also this is going to be a seating area which will be the, the finish level will be in and around those two bits of wood at the back um, so it's kind of dead space so what I'm going to do here because this is as you can see was just filled with all the rubble there's like where I dug out old fence posts when I first come here from at the back um, the old bits of concrete are just there so that's not all dirt it only goes down well you can see it just there it's about three inches of dirt and then it's all rubble and that but what I'm going to do here next is actually dig out all this cement and stuff that's down here take out these stones here and I'll probably use them in a bit which we'll get to um, and then I'll actually put some good soil in there so that if I need to I can put a climber in this bit and have it climb up there and then have like a little bench there my next thing that I've got to do as well as that is these steps um, <clears throat> as you can see I did have it so that the one on the bottom is sort of you know this, this is we're level with the house but my back is to the house now so that one the bottom one is sort of square and then it went into the 45 like that but I might do them both in a 45 going up and then what I'll do these old curb stones here um, that I haven't really got a use for the top step I'll lay them under that with a bit of concrete and thing on them just so it doesn't move and then that's a good use of that lot so that's something I need to um, do next um, what else is going on so up here I decided that on this seating area I'm going to have a sort of roof on it because this is going to drop everything soon uh, so this year it won't worry but you know I don't want to be constantly battling against all the stuff that's dropped on here so I think I was going to put a roof on it I was going to do <clears throat> sorry a kind of floating roof and have a bit you know if we think we're on the point of the roof now in between and then I have two cross braces coming off these but I don't think those fence posts are up for it so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a fence post in bang on the Y where that is and have it sort of come up here and then I can just run a bit across sit it on top of that and then run it across to the house and sit it on top of that so it'd be nice and strong um, but we'll get to that on a later date that move means that this Syathia is going to have to move uh, you can see it's just throwing up a new front now um, well, you probably can't but it's dead in the center of the screen but he's going and the fact he's still growing means it's probably a good time to pot him up uh, this oh, there's a big weed there but that Jurassic gold was just there for the time being what I'm going to do is take both of these out I've got a Dryopteryx Wallachiana, a proper one, which we'll get to in a bit. You can probably just see it over there. It's in a pot. Um, he's going to go sort of probably in the centre of those two because the final scheme is going to be somewhere in the middle of those, if you imagine those two stones and this royal fern in the centre of the screen are kind of a triangle. Somewhere in the middle of that is going to be quite a big tree fern. 
probably the trunk will come up as high as the top of those leaves and then it'll sprout new ones and then that's quite a nice little level so what's that four foot trunk on it or something like that <coughs> um so yeah i mean it's all future proofing and things like that at the moment but yeah these two are going to come up the dry up to it, which we'll get to in a minute is going to come over here and sit in there and then that'll bush out and then because this is going to have a fence post here uh, i can put a climber in because i have a very good contact for climbers now um and it can whirl around the post and go up and that so otherwise we move along sharply with this lot the dixonia is starting to slow down but still looking fantastic with its lime green fronds there's no trunk on this one it's just a <coughs> sorry a little bit of a cough today um <coughs> it's just um yeah like spirally and a bit gnarly so he's all right the erythium neponicum the silver ferns doing okay we'll just leave them in there uh, the Dixonia has thrown up two new fronds since the last time. This was the last one that we had, was this one. It's since thrown up that one at the back, which I was on about. And then you can see this one coming up here, and there's actually one just there as well, unfurling under all of that lot. Um, so I'll probably take this bent and damaged one off. I mean, that was like it when I bought it, but I'll probably take that off shortly. <coughs> so... Fatsy is still going strong, Polypodium still going strong, Arata is going strong. I was, I was thinking the other day this might be the most Jurassic looking fern and the reason is is because the um, stem or the stipe if you like, you can probably just see it there on the left one is black and it really stands out really well so I, I, I do really quite like them. Um, so don't be surprised if I get a few more. The Ethrythrosa uh, um, is doing alright, it hasn't really sent out any red stuff anymore so I probably won't put him where the Insetti is, we'll do we'll get to that when we get to it. The Vertical Garden, this is on my list to take out, what I'm actually going to do with this, because I've sort of seen enough now, I'm going to take it all off. I'm going to strap another fence post to that one, this side of it, and then I'm going to stagger them up. So. <clears throat> if you think at the bottom we'll have one pocket on the bottom on the left hand side to the center and then the next level up will be on the right hand side to the center and then diagonally up to the left diagonally up to the right diagonally up to the left diagonally up to the right i think that gives me plenty of space and if i get ones that all grow upwards rather than sort of dangle downwards it'll cover all the black out black up so yeah i'm going to do that at some point there's the new wallachiana i just bought there you can see he's really nice and he's not got crispum cristante you know split ends and that on it so he's gonna go over there and that'll probably be the spot that he lives um oh yeah a new plant alert new plant alert this is another fats here um the idea of this is this um fig tree which i put in a couple of weeks ago if you see it's got that first lot of branches there and then there's no more branches on it, I suspect when it dies off the next lot will be from the top of there. So what I want to do is basically have it so that it's a trunk all the way up the fence and then all the leaves are above. So next spring, or just when it starts growing again, I'll probably chop the those two woody branches off so it grows up and hopefully it might just have the branches come out of that at the sort of top of the fence height and that'll be perfect then I'll just leave it, I won't do anything with it then I'll just be there to live. So this fancy really needs to cover the sort of top of the fence height and above to sort of mid, you know, like a fern height up, so sort of half a metre, a metre up and so I've got this one, it's quite gnarly because you can see it's got two um, trunks and they're sort of bent leaning, so that gives it a nice good effect. That Asplenium um, Scolopendrium, you know, the, the, the um, uh, is it Hart's Tongue Ferns or whatever they are? Um, he was over in with the banana and he didn't like it there. I think it's because it's quite dry and well drained the soil, so I've moved him here for now and he's already recovered a little bit. These are the Hart's Tongues are doing all right. I will do something with these, but, I'm still figuring out I may this is it I'm thinking about too much at once I may get another one of these because you see how that tree fern is like quite nice like overlapping you know when I walk through here I've got to come into this little gap and come underneath I might put another one in there um, just that same sort of size trunk like maybe one up higher just so it sort of overlaps over here sort of thing but we'll see 
So the Scheffler Italiana that I bought last time is doing really well. It's not really, it's starting to, the next two inches is starting to wood up. Um, again, it's going to be a bit <clears throat> suck it and see with regards to wintering on that. Um, if it doesn't get any more woody, then I'll take him out, pot him up and keep him inside. But hopefully I might get away with it. Another new plant alert. This is a climbing hydrangea or a Pilostegia verbenoids, I want to say. Uh, it's evergreen. It's got these sort of lobe type leaves, which is what this area is. Have a few flowers on it and I'm hoping it'll sort of cover the, between these two fence posts, which I've got the wood to do some of this. Um, that's one of my next jobs is to go halfway up with this lot of fencing and then I can put some wires across and tie this in and get rid of the bamboo and get it growing in the right direction so we'll see how that does that's obviously going to take some time to climb um, the woodwardia this one's really done now and this one's just extending and like I said last time these uh, unfill really funny if you think a normal fern if you touch your right fingers onto your right shoulder a normal fern sort of if you then open up everything and that's how they sort of unfurl this one is more if you touch the back of your right wrist to your right hip and then sort of curl up your hand as best you can and then you want to kind of lift your elbow up and then extend your elbow and then unfurl your hand that's how they kind of unfurl these ones so they're quite weird quite nice to look at i'm hoping that's going to fill it out um, quite well when it gets going. The Scheffler Rhododendifloria is doing okay. He's having a bit of trouble with aphids, or he was. They keep coming and going, which is, you know, okay, I'll just sort of leave it as it is. T Rex, Tetrapanus Rex is still going okay. Um, the only thing is, I didn't think about the slugs when it started raining, so this leaf has come right out as you can see, and actually looks like a proper leaf. But the, the, the sort of two days later, half of it was munched, so I've been using that little coil of copper I got there. Um, I just had a spare in the garage of being a plumber, uh, and I just, I just, so you can just sort of see where it sort of sits around it overnight, and it does work actually. I haven't had any more slugs on them since then. It's actually throwing up two leaves now, so I'm quite sort of happy with that although this is the one that's given me the most things so i hear they don't like moving too much or being disturbed um but i think i'm gonna have to pot them up and i keep umming and ahhing about it i think if i can if it can get five or six leaves out before we have a run of three days of eight degrees as the lowest temperature then i might keep it out there and just sort of overwinter it out here but otherwise we'll go um otherwise the lophosaurus is doing right it seems to get bigger but really it's quite <laughs> creeps up on you this one it's quite slow but it's very nice to look at um, you can see the way the, the fronds sort of come out it sort of comes up on a stalk and then they do that so hopefully next year this time next year that would have sized up um, so that would be okay um, so what else have we got going on um, this bed's just this bed dahlias are still doing alright the bees are still loving them I'm still deadheading it this Insetti's turning into a bit of a monster. You've got to remember, I bought this in May and it was that leaf there and one the same size, it was tiny. And now, as you can see, he's quite big and they're quite deceptive, these leaves. They're bigger than they sort of look from far away, but he'll be coming out, so I'm just going to work out what I'm going to do over winter in him. This sword fern really isn't liking it there. I moved it out of that bed over there, but it's really not liking it. So I'm going to move that into the camellia bed, which we'll get to shortly. Um, otherwise, these are kind of doing all right. That, um, the crisp and Wally, Wally Kiana, he's going to go over there in that bed in a minute, which we'll get to. Um, the Arario Steg, uh, uh, probably Pinata, the hare's foot from, uh, fern is doing all right struggled for a bit and then it's just thrown up two new fronds in the last week so i'll just leave that and see what happens with that i might even get another one if it does well and put it on the other side that's obviously so when you're sat there it's all coming over your head cannas are doing really well um they'll definitely be staying there over winter and hopefully come back stronger next year because they tie in quite nicely i'll probably try and get a climber up in this corner here at some point um, otherwise, bananas are starting to slow down and get a bit more raggedy. Um, 
but I don't care as long as they just keep growing. Um, this Saxifraga is going strong. He's actually back to where he was about a month or two ago before he's decapitated by a cat. You can see there's a little runner coming out under that pine cone. It's probably got three or four going off, so I'm going to be interested to see whether that does a new plant or whatnot. Uh, the Bletchenum Chilonesi down here took a bit of a dig. This is a bit of a harder, it's more like a holly texture, but you can see it did actually get burnt from there, but it's sending up two more, so yeah, we'll see how that one does. Uh, and the next main bit I've been doing is this trellis. Now it may look funny that being a bit of a floating trellis because there's nothing underneath it, but they only come 1.8, um, which I assume is the width of a fence, um, and as I'm using them vertically, uh, I want them to go up a bit further. So what I'll probably do is some of this wood that I've got for the that I use for the fencing, um, I'll probably just put two things, but I'm gonna tidy it up a bit because I'm just using scraps of wood just to visualize it. As you can see, this one in the corner is not a complete bit of wood that I've attached it on. So what I'll probably do is that fence post, I'll probably move it there, then get something like that, like half a fence post, sort of, if you cut it lengthways, put that there and then put a fence post on the end but that's quite nice in there in the end we're going to get one of them nice three-seater sofas with like the leg rest on one of them and that's going to come out I've had a look and they're all going to come out just a bit further than this trellis this also ties up quite nicely you can see this camellia bed which we'll get to in a second but if we look up the line um, if you can see the straight bit of the middle bed that sort of angle if you see what I mean that's the equivalent of what that distance is then that jumps in the same distance as what it cuts back towards the bench where it is now so that it does sort of tie in um, but with this I just did a block and what I do with these I just buy ready mix concrete I'm not a block layer by any stretch so I buy I usually buy like six concrete blocks because they're only a quid and then the thermalite which are these sort of bluish ones um, they're more two quid but the good thing about them is that you can cut them with a hand saw like a normal wood saw wherever my one is uh, up there on the blocks um, which has meant I can cut all these 45 degrees into them without needing a proper block cutter and chucking up loads of dust um, so what I'm going to do with this these two camellias are going to go in here oh yeah here's the giant honeysuckle um, not very giant at the moment but that's going to go over there when it gets to it but we'll, I'll go into that in the next one because we're running out of time so what I'm going to do with this bed next is I'm going to dig out any bits of rubbish that I've got in between the pavers and then I'm going to put a layer of sand in there and then I'm going to put in some of the big uh, aggregate stuff that's sort of over there behind the two concrete steps that I'm going to take out then I'm going to put in a bag of gravel or something like that um, just so I know it's going to drain all right and then I'll do a sort of mix of manure um, ericaceous compost normal compost topsoil um, and whatever else I've got and just fill that bed up and then I'll probably put the camellia where it is at the back there that big one this little and I'll put in front of it and then I'll put the Dryopteris crispum fern there, the sword fern over here or something like that and just any others uh, like this little arachnoid which we thought was dead is slowly but surely coming back to life um, so that's good enough for me to chuck them back into the wild again and the maiden hair fern which was dead as well um, is actually sprouting in the leaf I've taken that one inside that's on you know defcon four or defcon one whichever the highest one is so yeah i've got plenty to be doing i've never got these fence posts and in the end i'm still just working out the logistics of it um with regards to roofing and stuff like that but yeah so my next little bits are going to be dig out this put some nice soil in there put these steps in properly and then that's that bit virtually done ready to put some grass or pavers or artificial turf or whatever I'm going to do and then I can put me um seat up on top of that this gets the sun as you can see last thing in night it drops over sort of in the center of the screen between those two houses so that'd be a nice spot for that um yeah other than that move the plants around I'll probably go around digging some chicken manure pellets and some flood fish and uh, blood fish and bone um make that camellia bed up pot them up 
take the Cyathias, take the Cyathia and the Jurassic Gold out, move that one on in there and that should be that. So yeah, might get another up.